Hey, what's up guys? Lewis with Elite Fine Finish. Why don't y'all come in? I want to show you a project we've got going on. All right. So we're doing the uh, kitchen cabinets. We're refinishing the kitchen cabinets. And uh, as you can tell, this is a very nice house. It's in a nice neighborhood. Um, one specific thing that I want to talk about today is going to be pricing. We get a lot of messages and calls and emails uh, specifically about how we price refinishing jobs and not even just refinishing jobs but finishing cabinets in general so i'll walk you through this kitchen give you a few examples of how we do it why you might not want to be uh, pricing certain things by the piece and so on so stay with us and we'll dive right in All right guys, so let's talk about the two main types of pricing that I've seen out in the market. The most common that I hear talked about all the time is piece pricing, where you come in and you price per door and drawer front. So let's just hypothetically say it's $100 per door. One, two, three, four. I know for a fact that there's 33 doors in this kitchen, okay? And then you add for your drawer fronts. That's one way to price. The other way to price is how we personally price by the linear foot for refinishing or square foot. You can do it both ways. So for me, linear foot and square foot pricing is the absolute most accurate way of pricing a job. And I'll, tell, and I'll show you what I mean by that, okay? So we've already talked about that there's 33 doors in this kitchen, okay? And then there's however many drawers. My issue with that is this. All of these doors in this kitchen are different sizes. As an example, this door right here, it's probably one of the biggest doors in the kitchen, but it's a good example of why we don't do it this way. 22 and a half wide, and this one's nine and a half wide. To me, it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to price that way when you have so many variables that could change your pricing. So I personally don't want to price everything by the piece. There's really, really large doors in here. And for this size of kitchen, you know, 33 doors really doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, I'm not telling anybody how much you should be pricing. I think that's something that every business needs to figure out based off of their overhead and individual products that they're using. But I will tell you, if you're charging $100 a door, and let's just say $50 a drawer front, that would probably put you under $5,000 for this kitchen. Me personally, this is a large kitchen, it's in a, a great neighborhood, and we're going to do a good job for the customer, number one. So we're going to charge a little bit more, so pricing by the piece, it just doesn't help a lot. Alright guys, so let's talk about standardizing your pricing. The reason I really like linear and square foot pricing is because it helps me standardize everything. And what do I mean by that? Well, let's say you have a contractor that you work with on a regular basis. Do you have to go out and estimate every single job that you do for that contractor? Would it make more sense if you had standardized pricing you can give that contractor? As an example, if you are going to paint cabinets a solid color, right? I would have standardized pricing for a solid color by the linear or square foot that I can give that contractor so that when he's doing his bids, he already knows my price and I never have to leave the office, right? Number two, standardizing your pricing is going to help you train new employees. If you're looking to grow, trying to train salespeople, what are you going to do when you get into the situations where they call you and say, hey, I have an island that has finished ends on it or I have wine racks or shelves or, you know, there's something in this kitchen that's not a door and drawer front, that's gonna consume your time. If you have standardized pricing by the linear square foot, it's gonna help you train those salespeople. All right, so how do we measure for linear or square foot? Well, there are two different processes, but me personally with cabinet refinishing, if I can get away with it, I usually try to stick with the linear foot pricing. And let me give you an example of where that can become difficult or confusing for some people. When you have a cabinet like this one where you have a built-in fridge and maybe it's not quite as wide but it's tall, 
The way we always do it, because we said we, we go up to eight foot on our linear foot pricing, let's just say this is a double oven cabinet. It's only four feet wide. I'm gonna count it as eight feet, even though it's only four foot wide because it's a tall cabinet. So here, I'm at eight feet. But this way, because I have to do crown molding, I'm at nine feet. So I'm gonna count this section as nine feet, okay? So we have nine feet here. And we have 16 feet here. So I'm gonna write this down so I don't forget. We've got 10 feet here. Now, if we're doing $100 a foot as an example, obviously on our island here, it's not going up to eight feet, so we're just gonna do it at $50 a foot for lower sections or upper sections only. So we've got six feet there. And I've got eight feet here. Okay, so I've got all my footage written down. Now, as you can see, that was a really, really quick way for me to uh, come up with an estimate for this kitchen, right? And don't get me wrong, pricing by the piece, it does make sense to some. I completely understand it. You know, if you're thinking that I want to know how many pieces I'm going to have in the shop and try to create an average time around that, I completely understand that. Now, one thing I will tell you as well, when you start getting to linear or square foot pricing, all of your paints and coatings have theoretical coverage. So if you look at your technical data sheet, it typically gives you a theoretical coverage up to a certain square footage at 100% transfer efficiency. I know that's a lot to take in and digest, but what that basically means is the manufacturer is telling you how much square footage that gallon of paint is going to cover, right? So if you really think about that, we hear a lot of times people ask us, how much paint should I buy? Well, if you can figure out the square footage of the kitchen, I'm not saying it's going to be perfect, but you can start getting very, very close. And all of those things together are going to make it easier for your business to grow. That's all I've got for you today, guys. I hope this video was informative for you. Of course, if you have any questions just shoot us a message leave a comment below if you haven't done so already please hit that subscribe button we would really appreciate it everything you can find uh, for your finishing needs check us out at www.hossosales.com